Hello, I'm Steve Phillips, and I'm out in my barn cleaning a few old fragments and uh, iron relics that are, uh, you know, nothing really precious, just uh, common stuff. And it's the uh, easiest way to do it. I use this tumbler, which is using a uh, about an eight inch uh, piece of PVC with a, a compion in it. And I took an old scuba tank tumbler, and I've used this for many years. It works good. It, it cleans off some of the uh, dirt and uh, rust and gets it down to where you can uh, uh, preserve it. Just uh, throw, throw some gravel in there with uh, the iron objects, a bunch of them, and put, put it about a a little bit of water in there where it's got a slurry and can clean itself up. But some of the uh, old fragments and things that I've found over the years and accumulated, some of these are found 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, and I've been uh, working on them for a couple of years. Uh, there were things that basically we threw away back then, but I, I kept a lot of them, and nowadays they're pretty good relics. Then after that, I, I preserve them. These have been preserved. They just need to have some place to put them. And I use, uh, to preserve them, this product right here is uh, Gimpler's Rust Converter. And what it is is a tannic acid-based uh, coating that you put on there. And it, it does a chemical reaction with the uh, iron. And it goes on there white or cream colored, immediately turns purple, and then it turns black. And it's the best I've ever found. I used to use paraffin, and then after that I used microcrystalline wax and, and big uh, heated vats. But I don't use that anymore. I found this to be a lot quicker, easier, safer, and just better. Okay, we've been tumbling some of the relics for a while, and uh, I'm about ready to get some out. The way the relics look when they go in is all encrusted and, and rusty and just uh, nasty and something not, not of the quality of something that you'd want to run through uh, uh, reverse ele electrolysis, but if it's just common stuff... That stuff's pretty nasty when it comes out of there. Let's see, these have run for about uh, an hour and a half. Now things look like this. So here's a fragment off of, uh, it's probably a 24 pounder or something like that. But it's a cannonball fragment. See how nice and clean it is now? And we just wash the dirt off of it. Preserve that later. Here's a... Here's a bottom off of a three inch... Uh, reed, Confederate reed. I can tell it's a, a reed because it's got the laid dimple mark in the bottom, which some have, some don't. And it takes the patina, when you tumble it, obviously, it's going to take the patina off of the uh, uh, copper on the Sabbath, but that's just the price you pay. It's not a, not a great relic, so it really, really doesn't matter. But they'll all look very similar to that. Here's a fragment from a, a great big ball. I don't even know what size that is. It looks huge. It's probably something that I found in Vicksburg area maybe uh, 35 years ago. But it'll preserve up good. And so that's the way that works. The rocks in there just help it. And more fragile things. See, I've got some stuff in here. Oh. There's a there's a knife I dug up 
on the farm here. It's not not a Civil War or anything. It's just something that's probably been in the ground for, uh, oh, I don't know, 40 years. And see, it didn't even tear up, tumbling with that heavy stuff. If it had been like a tin can, then it, it would have uh, destroyed it, of course. But these are just gravel rocks that are thrown in there. They were probably a lot sharper uh, when, when I first put them in there. Fragment from a three inch elongated projectile. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna preserve some of these relics that we cleaned in the tumbler. <laughs> and what we're gonna use is this Gimpler's Rust Converter, which you can order off the internet, just search Gimpler's. And it's a really great product. I've used it for, I guess, 10 years now. It's a lot easier than others and, and more effective. What it is is tannic acid based and it does a chemical reaction with the iron and goes into the metal, which is good. Um, I always wear gloves when I'm doing this because it'll stain your hand. Although it cleans up with uh, just water, but it, it don't come off your hands that good. It's, if you let it stay on too long, it makes it stain. And uh, we're gonna just do some of these relics. Here's a busted stirrup that uh, we found it's a heavy weight one. Just paint it on and it goes on white, but it immediately starts turning purple. And within a few minutes, it'll be purple. If you want to, you can put on two coats if you if it's a good good relic, but Usually you don't need to. Here's a fragment from a, a Hotchkiss fragment. You just paint it. One good thing about the uh, rust converter is if you've got a shell, a projectile, that's uh, all cleaned out, unloaded and cleaned out good, then you can actually pour it inside of the object and it'll preserve it from the inside as well. Here's one. I just painted a couple minutes ago. You can see it's already starting to turn purple. Within an hour, this will be black and, and good. But as you can see, the tumbler did a good job of cleaning this up. Now, most people are not going to know what this is. But what this is is a clip <coughs> found in the Alabama River, and it's uh, what they held the, the wire that held a cotton bale together. This is a, a cotton bale clip. So if you ever find one, you're probably gonna be in a pretty big river. And they're not found just everywhere. But you can see how easy it goes on. Here's a uh, railroad spike. And, and this happens to be an old, really old railroad spike. The way I can tell is I see these lines of flux in it. You can see that it's, it's not cast or anything as one piece. It's, it's got lines of flux from the uh, indicative of uh, wrought iron. Get it down there and let it drip all over it. And uh, Here's that uh, bottom of that three inch reed. It's all cleaned up now, ready to go, and just needs to be painted. It won't do, the uh, rust converter won't do much to this uh, copper. It's not gonna turn it, it'll just sort of coat it a little bit, but it really doesn't do any, it doesn't hurt it any. And you can look at all the shell. This is a Hotchkiss, but this is a case shot. It's uh, designed a little different in here, and it would be, Instead of a regular shell, this would be a case shot. Shell would look a little, little, little different there. And notice how good the tumbler does without destroying anything. See, this one 
is would have held a Borman fuse, and it happens to be a Confederate Borman fuse. And the way I can tell, I'll show you in just a second, but the underplug would go in, in these threads, and the Borman fuse would be here. And this one, I just noticed, when it cleaned up, can you see the G on it? I would guess this one is probably from Mobile area. It was made in Selma. I don't know if I can make it where you can see the G, but it's right in there. And that's that's G was stamped onto some of the projectiles that were made at Selma. This is not from Selma, but it was made at Selma. And it's probably from either Blakely or Spanish Fort or somewhere that uh, was was supplied by, by Selma. But you can you can look at all of them and see this one would have also held a the underplug would go here. This has been a 12 pounder probably, and uh, the Borman fuse would go there. This could have been either Yankee or Confederate. This one here held the wooden fuse holder and sometimes they'll have a, a little bit of stuff that sticks on them after you tumble and you just look at it and make a decision on what you want to do but I can just tap on some of that scale and it'll just come right off. A lot of people think you have to run everything through electrolysis but you don't because uh, electrolysis actually sometimes uh, can hurt and uh, it can, if you run it too long or too high a current, you actually uh, are weakening the uh, the metal. Guess that's all I need to talk about on this stuff. I've used this Gimplers for a long time. I really like it. I advise other people to. When I first started relic hunting back in the early 70s I didn't keep good records and I didn't uh, uh, I preserved my my good relics but I didn't preserve my just common stuff that was just all over like like fragments and, and things like that um, but now and I have for I guess 25 years I keep good records on everything I find so the history is preserved not just the relic we want to have the relics, and we want to preserve the history.